We're here today taking a closer look at the bed, which is a recreation of a bed the Washington ordered, the Washington's ordered in 1759. And what's really interesting about this bed is we think it shows Mrs. Washington's influence on the home, on the furnishings, uh, in the marriage in a way that we haven't uh, seen before in the house. We don't have the original bed that no longer survives, but we do have this incredibly detailed itemized receipt that tells us about every element uh, on the bed. And so we were able to use that to confidently recreate uh, what we think the Washington bed look like. The receipt described the bedstead as having neat, plain mahogany footposts. And so we found a period example uh, right here locally at Carlisle House in Alexandria uh, that had that type of footpost uh, and modeled the reproduction on that. The bedstead also had a sacking bottom, which was a canvas and rope bottom. That was your foundation. And on that, the Washingtons would have layered their hair mattresses, their feather bed, their blankets um, and sheets and the like uh, to create the firmness uh, they desired. Another hidden detail that you don't necessarily see, but that was important, was the iron compass rod. It was a U-shaped iron rod that ran all the way around the bed, around the outside of the footnote, footpost, uh, which allowed you to fully draw the curtains around, to fully encompass oneself in the bed. And that would have been hugely important, especially in the winter, when you want to keep as much of the warm air in as possible. And that was actually about a quarter of the cost of the, the whole bedstead. So it was an important and luxury feature the showiest elements of the bed and the most expensive elements of the bed were the textiles. The receipt describes blue plate cotton as the show textile, and plate printed cotton, copper plate printed cotton. It was brand new technology in which they used uh, copper plates, engraved copper plates, to transfer a highly detailed design uh, to the fabric. Another important detail on the bed was the blue guard figured lace that's mentioned on the receipt. And that, we might call it trim today, uh, it was only listed in a very small amount. So it made sense that that would have been the trim that underlines the cornice that attaches to the top of the balances. And you see that there, uh, recreated from a period pattern as well. Crowning it all on the bed was the cornice. It was described in the receipt as a neat cut cornice, which seemed to indicate that it was likely cut out along the top edge, that it may have had piercings, but it wouldn't have been elaborately carved. And so to recreate that, we chose a period example at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, uh, which came from a Connecticut home. And even though this is a relatively simple type of cornice for the period, uh, it does have many of the typical motifs that you would see uh, in any of the the cornices, such as the central shell that's behind me, the fleur-de-lis, and then these wonderful uh, S-scrolling curves, ears on the end of it. So the bed really showcases the Washington's good taste, Mrs. Washington's influence on that and her input into this home. Uh, we can say that this isn't just a bed, this is a work of art, this is a luxury sleeping experience uh, that the Washingtons were able to give their guests.